Welcome back to Libertalia Game Supply. I've got an updated Bujin deck list for you. Let's just get right into it. First, we got Triple Bujin Torifun. This is our main play starter. The effect to tribute to special summon two bodies out of the deck is just how you get all of your combos going. So three is going to be super necessary. Then we got Triple Bujin Mahitatsu. This is your best summon off of Torifun so that you can set up your graveyard a little bit. Maybe banish something to trigger an Arasuda with its foolish burial effect. It also acts as an extender in your hand by being able to discard a Bujin card to special summon itself from the hand, so it has a bunch of different uses. Makes it also a pretty good 3 of. And then for our last 3 of monster, we have Triple Bujin Arasuda. This is one of your better extenders. The only reason I rank this above Harume is because it can still normal summon, and it can be triggered by a lot of different things in the deck. So Mahitatsu's Banish to send one can trigger this. Harume's Banish to special summon itself can trigger this. It's just a great 3 of here also. For our two ofs, we've got Double Bujin Harume. It's a really good extender. I would play three, except you can't normal summon it. And so opening with multiple in your hand and no graveyard to make use of them yet is pretty rough. So two has been working out really well for me. And then we also play two Bujin Haruko. This is our rank up pendulum. It can be an extender if you open it even when you don't need it. And it does a really nice job of setting up something in the banish zone so that you have something to special summon off of Amaterasu, even if you hadn't done anything at that point to set that banish zone up. So it also just does a lot of work. And then for our last two Bujin Beast Warriors, we've got the one Yamato because I like to get my game on, and the one Mikazuchi because I like to chaz it up. These are just bodies to summon off of Torifun. Most of your other main deck Beast Warriors, you would want to use their effects so that you get full value out of them rather than summon them off of Torifun, and so these work really nice as replacements for those monsters. For Abujingi, we've got one hair. This will protect something from being destroyed once per turn by banishing it out of the graveyard. We've got the one Bujingi Turtle. This will protect your Bujin Beast Warriors from targeting effects, so something like Imperm can actually be negated by Turtle. That being the case, I'll try to get it in the graveyard as quick as I can just so that I have that option to protect my combo at some point if they try to stop it. We've got the one Bujingi Quillen, banish to pop a face-up card on the field. We've got the one Bujingi Centipede, banish to pop a spell or trap on the field. And then we've got the one Bujingi Sinew, which is the graveyard honest to just beat over whatever you might need to beat over. For the hand trap lineup, I've got two Nibiru just to nuke the board. One Ghost Ogre and Snow Rabbit so we can pop something that's trying to activate effects. So think something like a field spell or a continuous spell you have removal there, if not a monster. And then we're playing one Ash Blossom and Joyous Spring. Only one, because it doesn't act as a bridge for Small World to get to your Torifun, but we do play Cross Out Designator in this build, and so we want to try to negate any options that our opponent has to stop our combo, and this is one of our best bets. And so I'm willing to make the sacrifice to play a less efficient hand trap for the deck in order to protect the deck's combos a little bit more. For our spells, we're starting with Triple Small World to search Torifun. Then we've got Triple Fire Formation Tenki to search Torifun. Or anything else that you might need if you open the Torifun. We're playing one Monster Reborn because it's one of the best generic extenders we can play in a combo heavy deck, and so I felt like it was necessary to play it. We've got the one Photon Sanctuary. This card is kind of a brick. You can still activate it if you draw it, but it's here because it's a combo piece with Galaxy Photon Dragon to make the F-Zero combo. And we got two Forbidden Droplet. I chose to stick with the Droplet over Dark Ruler No More because Droplet can be used as an offensive or defensive card. You also usually will have inherent targets on your side of the field and Fire Formation Tenki at some point, and so it's almost for free at that point that you get to use the Droplet. And then for our Hand Trap Hate, we've got the one Called by the Grave and the one Cross Out Designator. I didn't want to play two Designator because I wasn't willing to play that many targets for it. If we got called by back to two, I'd probably go with the OCG ratios with two called by the grave, one cross out designator, plus your targets in your main and your side deck. And then our final spell is Foolish Burial because graveyard setup is just amazing in this deck. And then our only traps are going to be three infinite impermanence. It's just a good going first or going second card. Effect negation is just such a relevant aspect of the game right now. It also could be a cross out designator target as well. Getting into the extra deck, we've got one Bujinki Ahashima. This is another main combo piece. Using your tokens off of Photon Sanctuary, you're gonna make the Ahashima. Use Ahashima's effect to special summon two. Overlay for probably a Susanoo, and then you can finish the combos from there. It sucks that it can't be linked away, but that also can be a benefit because you really always wanna have a Bujin on the field to make use of your Bujinkis, and this usually will end up sitting on the field. 
Then we've got One Nightmare Phoenix and One Nightmare Unicorn. These are just such good going second link monsters as well as in the grind game because this is really more of a mid-range type deck. I wanted to have some extra deck plays available to me that would allow me to deal with boards rather than just focus on combo building, and so I settled on these. Then we've got Triple Susan. This is the best extra deck monster in Bujins. Detach one to search one to your hand or send one to the graveyard. It literally does everything that you need the deck to be able to do. And so this thing you will summon two, if not three times, pretty much every game. The one Kagutsuchi, just because it's a nice stall card if you need another turn or if you're getting later in the game and resources are starting to run low. The one Tsukiyomi, because it can be used pretty reliably within combos to refill your hand a little bit or ditch some stuff that you know you're not going to need just to draw two more. And then the one Bujinki Amaterasu, because this is one of your main combo pieces as well. I know I'm saying it a lot, but there's a lot of them. It's a long combo. Plus, it having an effect on your turn to special summon one back, or an effect on your opponent's turn to add one back to your hand, is relevant, because you're going to have it be pointed to by the Ahashima, meaning that you get the Ahashima back row pop. And if you happen to have Sargus on the board, you would also get Sargus's effect to remove some stuff too. We have the one Galaxy Photon Dragon to search Photon Sanctuary in our F-Zero combo. It also does have a 500 attack point boost to light monsters, so that could be relevant if you wanted to leave it on the board. Just to put OTK damage up, that's also an option. And then for our main boss monster, we've got the F-Zero and then the big F-Zero Utopic Draco Future. This guy is just a walking floodgate, and I want to summon this every single game as quickly as I can. We've got the one Merrymaker because it's necessary to make the one Sargus. Sargus has been a great blowout card if you can get it on board after setting up some other Xyz monsters because it's free removal once per turn whenever you use an Xyz monsters effect and I've really been liking it. And for our final extra deck monster we've got the trusty Evil Swarm Exiton Knight. Being able to blow up the board is pretty sweet. Also, unlike Zeus, Exiton Knight destroys everything, meaning your F-Zero would be protected and you could hair any of your Bujin monsters that are also on the board. So it can be really nice in preserving a little bit of your board while still blowing up a big board your opponent has. Now before you take off, I got a couple additional notes for this deck list. First off, the hand traps. There's four hand trap slots in the deck and I want, at the very minimum, two need to be bridge cards for Small World, but preferably three. And that's why in this one you had the two Nibiru and the one Ghost Ogre. And then that fourth slot is for Designator Target. If you wanted a fifth slot for an additional Designator Target or just a different hand trap you think you need in more quantity, I would cut a non-necessary one of. So something like uh, Yamato or Mikazuchi, which I will never do, but that's up to you. Monster Reborn, something like that. You also might find that you can burn through the resources with Torifun pretty quickly. Uh, you're going to be able to recycle it pretty easily once you get your board set up. And so I have found myself kind of wanting an additional Bujingi body in there just as one additional target because you're going to run out within a couple of turns. And so I have considered cutting Arasuda down to two and then putting a crane in there in order to have a little bit more balance between the two types of monsters since Torifun requires the two different types. I left it the way it is for now just because I really like having the extenders over having the bodies because once you've got your board set up, extenders on your follow-up turns are going to be what makes your board nasty. And going with the additional body route for Torifun means you're going to be most likely trying to restart a board each turn and that's just not really the goal. And then as far as a side deck for this deck goes, it's kind of built already to go second if you have to, and then the side deck just facilitates you going second because you know you're going second. So three evenly, three dark ruler no more. And then I would fill out the rest of it with targets for designator or different hand traps. So the bridge cards for this deck would be Nibiru, Ghost Ogre, and Effect Veiler. So I play two of each of those. The ones that aren't in the deck are in the side deck. And then everything else will just be kind of whatever you feel is going to be the biggest threat to you at your local game store, regional, YCS, whatever you're going to play this deck at. Probably not a YCS, that'd be a bad idea. But that's going to wrap it up for this one. Happy deck building. Have a good one.